Well, we're waiting on the fabrication shop for our battery boxes. So we've done just about everything that we can do. We've got it wired. We have, you know, things that we wait till the last minute to do. For instance, uh, we don't have any of our, our boots on. We don't do that until the very end. In case we have to do some troubleshooting, it's just, it's kind of a, a thing that I do. Seems like if you put the boots on early and you, you tidy things up too early, that's when you have to go back and undo things. So I just kind of uh, save certain things till the end, till the testing's done. And then I go through and loom things and put the boots on, that kind of thing. Um, we haven't used the heat shrink, I haven't used the heat gun on the heat shrink on this one right here, so it's just sitting here. But this is the, um, the line that goes forward to the charger. It'll come off the shunt right here, and away it goes. Um, we're still waiting because this will come from the uh, the front. Actually, we can do this. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is going to come from the the most negative, the battery pack, which is the rear battery pack. We're going to wait until we have the battery box get the exact length of the run, and when we know where it's going to be. That type of thing, and we could we could do it. But again, I just like to wait, make sure things are exact and they don't have to be exact on this kind of thing I mean if you have a little bit more of a, a loop or something uh, or we have a little more slack uh, you know underneath where you don't see it but anyway just gonna wait until we have the box in place and then we put in the end cells so we can get our exact wire links also we wait on our cooling system till we have our ABS pieces in. Um, again, it's not a necessity to do it that way. That's just the way that I do it. So we're real close. Um, this is the wire that's going to the that will go to the pump once it's installed. Um, so yeah. Just waiting on our battery boxes and we can finish things up. The um, wiring still has to be, you know, secured and everything. But this is from the vehicle was there before. Just kind of fell down from, <laughs> so, so we'll figure out what to do with that. I mean that that that's all the original mess right there. Um, so we still have some work to do do here. We got our charger and DC to DC converter. We've started running the wires for that. Uh, so not not completed but close. Um, this is the cable that goes from our, our main disconnect switch and that runs back to the main contactor which you saw before. So once the front battery box is in, it'll go from the front battery box to the switch, through the switch, back to the main contactor. The other side of the battery box, the negative side of the front battery box, will come out, go through our fuse, which is in here, come out, go down through that gland nut, and back to the rear battery box. And then from the rear battery box, that will be our, our negative most point, and that will go to the um, shunt. Got our inertia switch in. This is all 
wired. This is uh, goes to the um, charger, and of course we'll go to our switch. So when we turn off the switch, we set the disconnect the battery from everything, from the charger, the DC to DC converter, everything. Power goes basically from the most positive cell to here. That's be as far as you go when the switch is off. Um, for this uh, box here, we still have to connect the ground. And so that's there to remind me. I'm going to do the ground. We still have to mount these two in place. That's where they're going to sit, but they need to be mounted. So we're, we're close. Um, so we got to run the, the cable that's going to come from the DC to DC converter back here to the battery. And um, we don't have anything that gauge coming back here. So that's why we got to run a separate line. Um, stuff not secured but just laying in place. Like I said, there would be one more orange cable that will run down there. Once all that's done, then it's, then it's tidied up. So that's just the status report of where the thing is right now. And just waiting on those battery boxes. Well, guess what? We got the battery boxes in. We've got the, uh, the boxes installed. We've got the uh, cells installed in the boxes. Everything's wired up. And this thing is, is actually rolling down the road. But you're going to have to wait till at least next week to see uh, an overview and go for a little ride. But since this video was a little short, I thought I'd uh, um, fill the last few minutes with a reminder that we offer an online EV workshop. Now these workshops are uh, about 30 hours of video content. It goes through everything that you need to know to do a conversion yourself and to do it right the first time. And we've been doing this a long time. We started doing conversions and formed the business back in 2008. We uh, shortly thereafter started helping others do it themselves. And then after that, we started doing formal workshops. And our three-day hands-on conversion workshops uh, came about from there. And we've had people from all over the world attend these workshops. Um, we offered private workshops and people from all over. Matter of fact, most of the attendees for the private workshops came from India. So you can see that, you know, of course on YouTube I'm talking to a worldwide audience. I'm a small town kind of guy. I tend to think you know, the world's a, a little bit smaller than it really is. But yeah, uh, people from all over are interested in uh, doing this for themselves. And our big motivation was that we didn't want a bunch of vehicles on the road that people were doing themselves that weren't safe and that we could possibly be collateral damage because they did something that was uh, not too smart. So we thought it was in everybody's best interest that there was some kind of benchmark, that everybody converted vehicles in a manner that was safe, simple, and reliable. We've since added kind of a fourth dimension to it, and that's affordable. There are a lot of expensive, beautiful conversions out there where, you know, it's uh, restoration and conversion, and, and they're beautiful, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm kind of uh, thinking more like Henry Ford in that I'd like to see, you know, uh, more people be able to get into the conversion world. And 
no matter how you slice or dice it, it's not an inexpensive uh, ordeal. And I tell people that a conversion, it's, it's more along the lines of a, you know, a, uh, of a vehicle restoration, classic restoration, or building a hot rod. It's really not about the money, it's about the car. So unfortunately, because it does take a fair amount of you know, cash to do this, not too many places will want to finance your, your uh, conversion. And I recommend that you don't charge things on a credit card if you can't pay it off within a month. So, so unfortunately, it's not going to be for just everyone. But to open it up for more people, we show you the reality that it doesn't have to be this super expensive, uh, beautiful uh, appearing conversion that you see on YouTube. You can do a conversion that's safe, simple, and reliable, and affordable. I know. We've done it a lot of times. <laughs> and we've taught a lot of people who have done it a lot of times. And so we offer the workshops as an efficient way for both us and you to be able to get the information that you need to be able to do that. And so uh, we also are very generous with our time. Uh, a lot of shops can't afford to be. And uh, we really can't either in that, uh, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> but we pride ourselves in doing things very efficiently. And so due to that efficiency, we can uh, make time to help people. Uh, and, and we do. We, we spend a lot of time uh, returning emails and on the phone each and every day. And it's all for the same reason, and that is to help folks be able to build a safe, simple, reliable conversion. So, I just wanted to, you know, you know, should have left it well enough alone and you could have had a short under seven minute video instead of having to listen to me rattle on. But anyway, I've been doing this, like I said, uh, I got started in 2007 um, and we've been doing it professionally since 2008 and I'm still excited about this. This is a lot of fun. Uh, I've always been a car guy, so the fact that it has to do with cars is, is a bonus. But uh, I like electromechanical things and uh, always have. And so this is kind of the culmination of all those things, which makes for, uh, you know, a dream job for me. But I know a lot of others that uh, maybe they don't want to do it occupationally, but they just want to have their own conversion. And that's, <laughs> that's how I started all this. I had no idea I'd be where I am today. I just wanted an electric vehicle for myself, period. Anyway, it just is so much gratification in, in designing and building something that you can then enjoy daily that has a, a practical application to it. And so, you know, I was already going, you know, from point A to point B every day. Um, I drove the Carmen Ghia, as I've mentioned before, 97,000 miles in seven and a half years. That was my daily driver. Um, plus I'm driving, you know, customers' vehicles and, and I have lots of other vehicles. And so that's just one. So, you know, you can see if, you're, if it's something that you're doing all the time, to be able to have a vehicle, and I have multiple conversions that, that I own and, and, and drive, there's just a lot of satisfaction in that. That you're driving down the road just like everybody else. The only thing is, I did this. You know, I had the pleasure and enjoyment associated with building this car and now being able to drive it and use it on a daily basis and enjoy it on a daily basis. So it's not for everybody, I understand, but. For those that are interested, we're here to help you, and, um, and we'll do whatever we can 
to help you, you know, um, realize the same enjoyment that we have. And they used to call it the EV grin. And uh, you don't hear that term as much anymore, but it still exists. So until next time, I hope you enjoy the ride.